Scientists have discovered a 31,000-year-old skeleton years old with traces of leg amputation in the Liang Tibo cave in the Indonesian part of the island of Borneo. Home to some of the world's earliest rock art, scientists have discovered the remains of a young person showing signs of a leg amputation. The skeleton is 31,000 years old. Years. Which means that researchers have found the world's oldest example of amputation, without modern antibiotics and painkillers. Scientists have found the earliest example of a leg amputation. Tens of thousands of years before the advent of modern surgical instruments, antibiotics and painkillers. The skeleton of a young person with clear signs of lower leg amputation has been discovered on the island of Borneo. Scientists say the patient lived another six to nine years after the operation. According to research published in the journal Nature, the prehistoric operation shows that humans made advances in medicine much earlier than previously thought. Researchers at Griffith University in Australia stumbled upon the remains of a young individual in 2020 while exploring Liang Tibo Cave on the island of Borneo which is in a rainforest region known for the world's earliest examples of rock art. The discovered skeleton was intact, but missing the left foot and the lower part of the left leg. After examining the remains, scientists concluded that the missing pieces were not lost in the grave or lost in an accident. They were carefully removed. The remaining bones of the left leg show traces of a careful diagonal incision that has healed. There were no signs of infection, which would have been expected if the lower leg had even been bitten off by a large predator. There were also no signs of fracture or crushing, which would be expected if a juvenile were injured in an accident. According to the researchers, all indications are that this person lived for about six to nine years after the limb was severed, eventually dying of unknown causes as a young adult. The find suggests that the prehistoric people of Borneo knew enough about medicine to perform amputation without fatal blood loss or infection. Unfortunately, the researchers did not determine exactly what tool the ancient surgeon used to amputate the limb or how he prevented infection. However, they speculate that the cut may have been made with a sharp stone tool. They also point to some of the plants found in the region that have healing properties and could be used to prevent infection. But that's not all. The community had to take care of the young patient for many years, because surviving in the difficult terrain after an amputee was certainly not easy. It was a huge surprise that this ancient patient underwent a very serious and life-threatening operation as a child, that the wound healed to form a stump, and that he lived for years in mountainous terrain with limited mobility, suggesting a high degree of care in the community where lived, says Melandry Vlock of the University of Sydney. Tim Maloney of Griffith University stressed that this early operation, rewrites the history of human medical knowledge and development. The earliest example of amputation to date was found in France, with the skeleton of an elderly man who had his left forearm removed just above the elbow 7,000 years ago. Even today, when doctors have an arsenal of medical products to prevent infection, stop bleeding and stop pain, amputations require considerable technical skill and manual dexterity. Until now, scientists thought that advanced medical practices developed around 10,000 years ago. Years ago, when people settled in agricultural societies. But this find can be added to the growing body of evidence that people started taking care of their health much earlier in their history. Maloney and colleagues say the discovery disproves the prevailing assumption among archaeologists that more complex operations were beyond the capabilities of nomadic societies.
The authors of the publication admit that an ancient surgeon or team of doctors had to have a detailed knowledge of human anatomy, hygiene and the circulatory system in order to be able to efficiently move among the veins, blood vessels and nerves, amputate the foot and prevent blood loss and infection. But most of all, these people needed to know that this young person had an urgent need to remove the lower part of her leg so that she could go on living. The new discovery in Borneo shows that people were already able to successfully amputate diseased or damaged limbs long before we started farming and living in permanent settlements, says. Archaeologist Maxime Aubert of Griffith University. Determining the age of remains can be difficult. In this case, the researchers dated the skeleton by measuring the trace levels of radiation preserved in the tooth enamel, which gave them an age estimate consistent with radiocarbon dating of the sediments in which the remains were buried. The dating results show that this person died between 31,201 and 30,714 years ago at the age of about 19 to 20. Researchers were unable to determine the gender of the remains, but their height was similar to that of males known to have lived at this time and place. It is not known whether the ancient inhabitants of Borneo possessed advanced medical abilities. Perhaps the discovery represents an isolated and rare case. However, the extensive knowledge that indigenous communities usually have about plants with medicinal properties growing near where they live suggests that the ancient people of these rainforests knew how to effectively treat infections. But their knowledge could go deeper. One possibility is that the rapid rate of infection in the hot and humid tropics prompted the region's early foragers to take advantage of the rainforests, natural pharmacy, of medicinal plants, leading to an early boom in the use of forest resources to produce anesthetics and antiseptics, says India Ella Dilks Hall of the University of Western Australia. All previous archaeological cases of advanced surgical procedures were associated with large, sedentary farming communities, ancient Egyptians, Peruvians, etc. Amputation survival is the latest medical norm for most Western societies where antiseptics were developed in the late 19th century. It was the first major step towards amputations often done by barbers at the time, Maloney points out. Different colored hair from birth. What is poliosis? Poliosis is an interesting condition. It manifests itself as a white or gray band on the hair, often around the forehead, but it can also affect other parts of the body. This condition can be present from birth and is associated with a lack of a pigment called melanin in the hair follicles. While the loss of pigment itself is not dangerous, poliosis is associated with various other medical problems, some of which can be very serious. Poliosis, i.e. the loss of melanin in the hair follicles, usually affects the head, most often around the forehead, but it can also appear on the eyebrows or eyelashes and in other hairy parts of the body and affect the surrounding skin. Therefore, this condition is very easy to notice. White or gray highlights stand out from the natural color of the hair. Changes in pigmentation may appear in one point of the head or be spread over its entire area. Poliosis is a rare disorder. There is no difference in incidence between men and women or between ethnic groups, but the disease is more prominent and noticeable in people with darker skin. It can appear suddenly at any age. It is also possible that the condition will be present from birth. Scientists do not fully know what the causes of the disorder are and what mechanisms are involved here, but various diseases, often dangerous, have been associated with poliosis. It is also known that genetic factors may play a role in this condition. As previously mentioned, 
Polyosis is caused by the absence or limited presence of melanin in the hair follicles. Melanin is the pigment that dictates the color of skin, eyes, hair in humans and fur in animals. In humans, hair color depends on the amount and type of melanin molecules. For example, in people with blonde hair, there is little of these ingredients, and melanin molecules have a spiral structure. The lack of dye in a part of the hair is not dangerous, but it is often a condition that occurs along with many dangerous diseases. Polyosis can develop due to genetic conditions. It may accompany tuberous sclerosis or Wardenburg syndrome type 2. It can appear along with autoimmune diseases such as vitiligo. It can also occur as hair regrowth in alopecia areata and in conditions such as vote koyanagi harada disease and Alessandrini syndrome, and in association with cancer, certain medications, and inflammation. Therefore, when you notice symptoms, it is best to go to the doctor. Currently, it is not possible to permanently change the shade of hair altered by polyosis. Of course, you can dye the hair strands affected by the change or use aesthetic medicine treatments. However, not everyone wants to hide the disease. Some treat it as an original beauty-enhancing asset.